Hey there YouTubers, it is Don from Shrew Cable coming at you again. And this time we're gonna talk about RJ45 plugs, and by the way, that's actually not the correct term for them, and Keystone Jacks, and what the differences are and what you use where. Actually, that opens up the discussion to become a little bigger because what you use this hardware on and where you, where you would use it has a number of factors. Are you dealing with solid copper? Uh, Ethernet twist, copper twisted pair Ethernet cable? Or are we dealing with patch cords? And are you dealing with a structured cabling system or do you just need to patch something into something else? So all of these things uh, have a, a say in, in how you terminate something, the best way of going about it. There's ways of you can do it and there's ways you should do it. And so that's what we're gonna get into in this video. I hope you find it entertaining. I'll be right back, stay tuned. Okay, thanks for joining me again. And so we need to have a bigger discussion about what the technology is and what we're dealing with and what you use where and also what a structured cabling system is. So first let's get the term RJ45 out of the way. Um, I'm gonna intentionally use the term RJ45 incorrectly. Uh, the reason why is because these really aren't RJ45s. These are 8PAT modular plugs. So uh, although they're very commonly referred to and sold as RJ45s, that's because people just, a lot of people just don't know to call them anything different, but it's not really a quote unquote RJ45. But I'm gonna refer to it that way because it just rolls a lot easier off the tongue than 8P8C modular plug, a lot more words. And so uh, that is what a modular plug is. Now, keystone jacks are something that you see mounted in, in a patch panel uh, where you have all your cables organized or in remote wall plates like so. And that is a termination that is mounted. We got in-wall cable, and you have solid copper structured cable that is terminating into keystone jacks. And that essentially is known as a rack to jack strategy, otherwise known as a structured cabling system. And then you patch into that keystone with a patch cord. Now we need to have a little discussion about shielded versus unshielded. So, if you're using shielded uh, copper twisted pair uh, category cable, CAT5, CAT6, CAT6A, whatever it is, uh, you're going to be using a shielded RJ45, and you're going to be using, well, you may use a shielded RJ45, but preferentially you're going to use shielded keystone jacks and terminate both ends of the cable to that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about why keystone jacks are better, generally speaking. Although you may be forced into a situation of using a, a RJ45. We'll talk about that too. Uh, so generally speaking, you're going to use shielded hardware, but you will use shielded hardware with shielded cable. And you'll use unshielded uh, hardware, unshielded keystones or RJ45s with unshielded cable. And so unshielded cable, it's got twisted pairs. It actually does have a form of shielding built in with the electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic balance going on. It just doesn't have like an overall foil shield or something like that. All right, so you know now that you're gonna to wanna to pick shielded for shielded hardware and unshielded for, and you shouldn't go mixing the two. Uh, it is technically possible uh, to use shielded hardware on unshielded cable. You shouldn't do that because uh, it gives people the wrong impression of what they're dealing with. So if they walk up to a patch panel and they see a shielded keystone, they're gonna assume the cable that's terminated to it is shielded. So it's just not a recommended thing to do, and it may not fit anyway due to differences in compatibility. So just avoid that. Keep shielded with shielded, unshielded with unshielded. Okay, so now let's have a little talk about RJ45s and why they're your least best option for terminating a copper twisted pair ethernet. First, um, if you read through the standard, you go through formal training like Bixie training, you're going to find that the vast majority of professional installers and the way you should be putting in Ethernet is it's a structured cabling setup. So you're going to be going jack to jack. So you're going to have solid copper, in-wall Ethernet cable like that, and you're going to be going from jack to jack or a patch panel to jack it's called rack to jack strategy. That's a structured cabling system. Uh, you won't actually terminate an RJ45 onto anything. 
The only time you will see an RJ45, or should see an RJ45, is with a patch cord already attached to it, already a certified patch cord. And the reason why that is, is because RJ45s are notoriously finicky for being uh, issues, but there's issues with fitment, there's issues, you've got also got <clears throat> eight relatively fragile golden contacts here, right? So there's a possibility that um, a manufacturing tolerance can get off, you can have missed terminations. So if you're gonna be dealing with RJ45s, my personal recommendation is to make sure that the only time you ever play with one is when it's already on a patch cord. And we sell pre-terminated uh, patch cords that are certified, ready to go, guaranteed to work, so you don't have to worry about that. So there's, if you're gonna have a problem in a, in, a, in a system, it's almost always tracked back to this, this thing right here. Now, there are times when you could get forced into using uh, a RJ45 modular plug. And a great example of that is, let's say, for example, you've got your keystone terminated into your patch panel, and you've got that long run, and it's going to an access point or a camera. Well, that's got a port already on it, right? So that's known as power over Ethernet. It's a PoE-powered camera that gets its power and data over the same cable. Well, it's inconvenient to have to terminate your solid copper cable, again, to a keystone, then use a patch cord to complete the connection. Uh, so there are situations, especially if you've got a tight camera housing or a access point where you can't fit anything else into it because it's outdoors, that you have to put a slim uh, RJ45 plug onto the end of the cable. Just be aware that you need to be sure that you're buying the plug and the cabling from the same manufacturer, and that manufacturer has actually gone through the process of vetting and testing those out and actually telling you what works with what, and they should have data to show you. Now, we have all of that at True Cable, uh, but if you go and buy one brand of one thing and then one brand of another, you're taking a huge risk that your plugs may not fit. Just a little bit of a difference can, can really ruin your day. Big reason is that RJ45s, the way they terminate your conductor is they have golden contacts coming down like this and it's piercing the insulation, true, but it's straddling that conductor longitudinally like this. So if something's a little bit out of spec, there's a lot of room for error. Keystone jacks on the other hand, what we refer to as IDC termination, insulation displacement contact type terminations, you've got two knives coming in from right angles that, that pierce the insulation, but also dig into the copper. And so if there's a little manufacturing variance in there somewhere, well, the spring, uh, these spring knives actually compensate for that. And these are much more durable as a result. And they, and they also give you a much better chance of getting good performance because they're all category rated, because they have a printed circuit board inside, which helps a lot with your cable runs. That's the difference between Keystones and RJ45s, and the pluses and minuses of both. With that, I'm going to say, uh, please subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit. Uh, definitely leave a comment below if you've got something to say or a question or something, I wanna hear it. And with that, I'm gonna say you have a great day. Happy networking. Thank you very much for watching the video. You may not be aware of it, but we also have extensive blogs at our Cable Academy, 200 plus and counting. And most of the videos that you actually see here on YouTube are in fact embedded in a blog, which is far more detailed in regards to photography and descriptions. So I strongly recommend you head over to our Cable Academy, truecable.com and check it out.